Welcome back everybody, this is Jason Seacrest. We're going to have a fun little time doing a little elephant character today. We are going to go nice and slow so you can follow at home or in the classroom. First thing we are going to do is go File, New. And we will create a new document. And we'll just do a nice 5x5. Five five. Pretty much all of the tutorials are in the same format. Uh, right now my color mode is RGP and my raster effects are at 300. Everything else is pretty much defaulted out. I am going to click OK. Next, I'm going to personally hide my artboards, but what I would definitely recommend having turned on are your smart guides, especially if you guys are brand new. It will let you know if you are grabbing an anchor point or if you are grabbing a handle, and it will take away a lot of the frustration. So I definitely recommend having your smart guides turned on. Next, we are going to go File Place. We are going to be looking for our elephants. Anchor Point Guide, and if you have not gone to jasonsecrest.com, that is where all of the resources brushes are hanging out. Uh, I will email you the folder. That's basically an auto response, and my recommendation then is to save it as a bookmark so you will have them from here on out. So all of the new resources will go right in there, and you will immediately have them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my anchor point guide. I did knock this size down so it does fit a 5x5. Five five. Select it. And I want to just drop down that opacity. 30% seems to be working out okay. I'm going to lock that out. Let's create a new layer. Let's go inking. Okay. That is it. Now whenever we're doing this, what I want you guys to just focus on is I will walk you through every single point, so I don't want you to look at this as a whole. It's a little bit more intimidating that way, but I do want you to just kind of see this. We will go through every single point. Now, what I wanted to do today is not necessarily a different process, but I just want you to see pretty much how I would do it at home, and then we will uh, go from there. So it's a little bit more of about efficiency, and then we also want to go and speed this process up a tiny bit. So you will automatically see all of the handles. What we are going to do first is we're just going to grab the pen tool. And all we are going to do is we are going to click on all of these straight lines. Click on P. Click on P. So what we are going to do today that's a tiny bit different is we are just going to be plowing through all of our straight lines first. So it's a little bit different. And what we are working on is just our pacing. Click on P. Now the major thing when you guys are doing this, it's going to look a little bit silly just because some things are going to be straightened out. Now if you are click, click, clicking and things are starting to connect, just click on P. Let's say, oops, this one didn't connect. I could always come back to it and then just bring it back. So just reset your lines click on P so if they're connecting a lot that just means you didn't click P to reset good let's do his upper cheek there okay now some things are gonna come back just so you're aware so right now all we're really doing is just getting a lot of our base bases covered good that one's gonna go there good let's do the nose or trunk I guess would be a better way of saying it good I'm just gonna do a straight line right in there I'm gonna come down at the bottom hold down shift we'll just come right back on up click on P hold down shift Plop it back up, click P. I'm going to be holding shift on that one. Come back up to the top, good. Uh, let's do that. Click on P. All right, let's just do these insides. These are going to be pretty easy. Just little triangles for right now. One, two, and three. Good. I think 
The only thing we have left are circles. Get out, right? How easy. I am going to put a little bit of a bulge on this guy. So I'm going to go warp, bulge. Let's just see where we're at. That's good. Let's just go 15. So you guys can follow it at home. I'm going to go object, expand. Just line that up. Good. We're going to take that exact same one. And we're just going to drag that over until it matches up the bottom. All right, good. I will do, let's just do scissor for right now. So this top part we'll just get rid of. Let's go delete. Okay. Uh, let's grab this guy. So I'm doing my alt option, by the way. These are going to drop down to the toes. Let's just zoom down to the toes. We're going to go one. We're going to grab two. I'm going to say this back one is going to get smaller. Good. Let's grab that back one. We'll just shrink that one up. Let's just do P. All right, good. So let's grab these two. Hold down Shift. I'm going to go Alt. Just drag those guys over. Maybe I'll make that a little bit fatter. Let's grab these two. Black arrow. Hold down your Alt. So I'm just grabbing white arrow. Let's just drag that guy on up. And I might bring this out a little bit. Alright, let's do some eyeballs. Nice thing is we are going to do one. And then we'll just bring it on over. So there's bottom, control C, control F, and or command. All that is is copy, paste in front. Good, do it again. I'm holding on shift and alt, by the way. Grab that one, control C, control F. Keep in mind, you could just draw new ones if you wanted to. Good. So I'm just doing C right now. C is our scissor. And we're just hacking off all the tops. Delete, delete, delete. So we're going to go Shift. Now I'm doing Alt. Drag that guy over. Just scale it down. Let's just plop it into place. I might just squash that a little bit. Okay. Did we get it? I think the only last little things is our circles. And I don't think any of you were stressing out about the circles. Alright. So that was kind of the fast version. Now all we have to do is do our Shift C. So now we're just coming back, lining up our points. And some of these we're just going to be rounding out. Shift C. Just like rounding the edges, things like that. Now if you can't see a point, that is why we have our smart guides turned down. But you can just click on it and usually that'll pop up. So that's why we have our little spark guns. It'll tell you when you have an anchor. Little Horton ears. Pretty close to Horton, I think, on this guy. 
good. So all we're doing is just looking at our handles. We are just dragging those out. Good, shift C. Just looking for little, little things here and there. But we're getting pretty close, guys. We are cranking. Now, if anything's a little bit off, or if you want to extend them a little bit this would be a good time to do that do a little bit of curves on these all right all I'm gonna do is a little line here shift C and that'll just be a little tail okay file save Elephant. Tutorial. Good. The little pop-up, everything will be default. Hit on OK. Now next we are going to be installing our brushes. So just come down to user define. We are going to be doing some tints. And that's just in case you guys want to, to color them. And keep in mind everything is still in stroke form. So we can modify quite a bit. All we're really looking to do is start getting more and more efficient with our pen tool. So you can kind of see that we kind of sped up the process. And then next, all we are going to be doing is adding on our brushes. Now, if you don't have our, your brushes installed, there are some tutorials out there um, on YouTube as well as on my blog, Jason Seeker's where I'll show you how to uh, bring them over, create your art brush, change the colorization mode and or the direction, especially on the two that that uh, bounce back and forth. Everything else is pretty much centered, so it won't matter. And then you can save the art brush library, or the library, and then you can have them for future tutorials, since we pretty much use them for every single one. Okay, so let's have some fun. We have those here. I'm going to hide this guy. I will also duplicate out the inking, just in case. So if I ever wanted to come back, change things around, uh, I would have this one. Typically, the layer that has the brushes that is still in stroke form that is the layer that you want to keep since that has all of the heavy lifting that we just did so let's let's have at it shall we so whenever we're doing brushes just what we're really looking for is the edges so we are looking for if these are floating out in the space that is a good signal to have those tapered Okay, we definitely want to chop this up a little bit. I say, let's chop it off there. I'm going to go right above that eyebrow and right on that side of the trunk. Good. So we get rid of that side. I do want this coming up. And then we can get rid of that top. And if you were going through this and you see anything that you want to change and or modify, you were definitely able to do so. All right, so let's do taper down that guy. I want it to be fat up at the top. I want this one to be fat and then tapered. Perfect. Pretty much everything on this side I am 
going to do fat on both ends. Fat on both ends. Let's go fat on both ends for that one. Actually, let's take that back. I want fat down at the bottom. And I want that one to come popping through. That can be fat on both ends. I want it to be fat down at the bottom. Now, if we ever need to come back through and extend our line, I'm just using the white arrow. Just kind of extending them a little bit. And then also, as we start adding thicknesses on, especially to a couple of these, we can come in and then modify the points a little bit just so they read a little bit nicer when we add on the brushes. I say fat on both ends. This is going to be a taper on both ends. I want it to be fat at the top. All I'm going to do is move that one. I want it to be tapered on that left-hand side. Take that back on the right hand Left side, I want it to be fat. Then I want this to be the little taper right there. Looking good. So what we are going to do is go fat to taper. Let's go taper on both ends. Ooh, let's go fat on both ends. Let's do the fatter version. We'll come back and modify the toes a little bit. Let's just do a little little taper. That'll probably disappear a little bit. Oh, let's go tapered on both ends. Let's do the fat version of it. I say fat on both ends. I'm going to drop that down a tiny bit. So I want this to be a little bit sh more pointed. This is going to get filled in. So if you ever see me not do one, sometimes that will just get filled in black. So it's not going to matter as much. So a lot of these are going to get filled in. Oh, let's do fat on both ends. All right, good. Let's do some toes. And we're only going to do these fronts. These are all just going to get silhouetted in the back there. Now, I'm going to go tapered on both ends, and then they're going to start bouncing a little bit. And the major just the decision is which toe is in the front. I'm going to say this little guy is going to peek in front of that one. And so all we're going to do is with the scissor tool, I'm going to come in and then just get a little bit of a taper. All of these not going to be as big of a deal since we're just going to delete them with the eraser tool later. So these, as long as they are extending out, and I know you can't see them that wonderfully right now. So I'm just saying that guy can go. And so you'll see that this one's still floating. You don't even have to delete this little area. What I'm basically looking for is that the taper is actually happening in the middle and not hanging out over here since that would actually show up. So just in case that taper is not where it's going to hide or we're going to delete it, that is why we're deleting it so you can control where these lines taper. So it's just going to be dependent on kind of what your, uh, your computer set is the starting point. Good. Let's just pop those down. Now we'll probably align these later, but let's just leave those alone. Okay, little boogie check. Little tiny things. I am just double checking that once or if we uh, delete that these things are going to 
get tucked behind. I'm looking for edges, especially with the brushes that have the fat edges. You want to make sure that those are all overlapped. So when we do the next step with the eraser, that they'll be able to uh, get covered up. Okay, okay. And again, this is a good little time to, if you think, hey, I want to modify any of these things, that's going to adjust over there. Just tuck that in. All right, I would say file and save. Good, good, good. So next little step is what we're gonna do is we are going to basically do the eraser tool and we're gonna start cleaning up all of these lines. So this is what we are gonna do. I am going to duplicate this one. This is the one that is still stroked out. So I'll say brushes, that is in a stroke form. This one is going to be the one where we are going to expand and then use the eraser. So the one that I really want to make sure that I always save is the one that is in still stroke form, just because it's a lot easier to edit. Okay, so if you like, say everything looks good, I don't need to adjust thicknesses at all. I don't have any weird little strays. Then at this point, you should be able to Expand. So let me just, I'm just adding some thicknesses here and there. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. I probably will leave these guys alone. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grab everything. Keep in mind we're on the duplicated expanded layer. I'm not going to grab these little circles, by the way. I think we are good. So let's go object expand. I'm going to hit it again. Just double check we got all of our strokes. Usually this little pop-up will show up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is we'll basically crush through this. And I would just wanna kinda show you the head so you guys get the concept. And then at the end of this video, what we'll do is we'll just pause it so you can see kinda how everything plays out since it is not fun TV watching me to race stuff. So all I'm doing, especially if this is your first time with the eraser tool, all I'm doing is black arrow. I am selecting the shape I want to delete. So I'm looking for any of these little overages. And then I just use my eraser tool, shift E. Just so it's nice and clean. Now the idea is we want it to pretty much hang out underneath any of our little strokes here. So if I say, hey, this one, these guys need to move up. So notice I select the line, Shift E. And I'm just getting rid of all of that overlapping. Okay, so I'm gonna go through that whole process. When, in about two seconds here, I'm just gonna flip over. Everything will be nice and done for you. And then what you guys can do is just pause it. Okay, so everything is pretty much cleaned up at this point in time uh, what you are looking to do is just the major thought decision during the entire time when you're doing the eraser tool is just what's in front what do I want showing and then at that point in time you can save if you want to unite your colors at this point in time then that might not be a bad idea uh, do notice that I did fill in the, the little circles and I did erase through the feet so I did do that as well uh, we are gonna end this video here and then in the next tutorial, we are going to basically add our elephant swatches. We are going to be doing the highlights, shadows, gradients, and uh, we'll do all of the coloring for our little elephant on the next tutorial. So thanks for hanging out, and I will see you guys on the color.